Reading in Revelations chapter 22. I'm preaching on the last page. Amen. Verse 7 says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Twentieth verse. And he which testifieth these things saith, Surely, I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. We're in the last days. We're in the last page. And did you hear what I read? He said, Behold, I come quickly. Is that the way it reads in your Bible, Brother Tommy? Is that the way it reads in your Bible, Brother Ray? You got a King James Version there? What does the seventh verse say? Read it. I read to you three times. The Lord speaks in a red letter edition. All these scriptures I read to you are in red. When the Lord says it, that should add weight to it. Amen. Behold, I come quickly. Oh, what does the word quickly mean? One paraphrasal said in translating the 12th verse said, Behold, I come soon. Amen. Oh, behold, I come quickly. We're in the last days and we're on the last page. Hey, Peter said, What manner of persons ought ye to be? Who's coming? What's he like? Praise God. 19th chapter 11 verse, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Folks, the judge is coming. Folks, the judge is riding into town. Amen. Judge Parker in Fort Smith, Arkansas, was placed there by the United States government to pronounce judgment upon the criminals that took refuge in the bordering state of Oklahoma and in those bad, line, bad lands. He hung so many men he was called the hanging judge. I've been there to the museum Amen. And saw the rebuilt uh, gallows where they hang uh, men. And uh, <coughs> Judge Parker, the hanging judge, was a feared man in that day. People came to watch men hang. Women brought their knitting and people brought their lunch. Amen. And it was a, a big occasion when they, the biggest news in town was that the hanging Judge Parker was hanging another criminal. Amen. But listen to this. In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. 
What kind of a judge is this? His eyes were as a flame of fire. His head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And we're going to stand before that judge. The world is going to stand before him. Quickly. Whose eyes are a flame of fire. His vestures dyed with blood. Why? He's tread the winepress of his wrath. And blood has splattered all over him. Amen. When it was great time and treading the grape time and time to uh, make and preserve the juice uh, uh, of the crop, the harvest. They would throw these grapes into a huge vat and they would roll their garments up as high as they could in propriety. Amen. And they would jump up and down on the grapes until the grape juice splattered all over their garments. Amen. And that's how they tread the grapes in Bible times to make the wine. Amen. Jesus has just tread the wine press of his wrath. Amen. And his vestures dripped in blood. Dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. You know who that is? That's us. If we'll keep on doing right, we'll be on the right side of the judgment bar when he comes. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. That's why his vesture is dyed in blood. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who is this one that said three times in the last page of the book, Behold, I come quickly, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. He's coming. Turn over to the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation. After this, that is after the career of the church is over. After these things about the churches. I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Which said, come up hither and I'll show thee things which must be here after. That is, after the things of the churches. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. A door is opened in heaven, and as those gilded portals swing wide, what falls upon the gaze of John the Beloved? He said, He that sat upon the throne was to he that sat was to look upon as a jasper and a sardine stone i looked in the references and 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 in the uh, some of the center columns in in the bibles have a trans translation uh, in the column and one of them said a beautiful sea green amen god likes that color he wears it himself. 
Praise God. A jasper and a sardine stone. Amen. And there was a rainbow about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. What beauty. What splendor. What majesty. And around the throne and about the throne were four and twenty seats. And the Greek, amen, says four and twenty thrones. Thrones like the central throne. Amen. And upon the seats of thrones I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. How did they get there? Praise God. They were caught up through that open door. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yes, the angels beckoned me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Praise God. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. And finally John repeats in answer to the proclamation, Amen. That means so be it. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. They told a funny story years ago about the preacher that said, Behold, I come quickly. And he was going to try to quote it and he forgot the rest of his text. The third time he said, Behold, I come quickly. And he still couldn't remember it. And, and the second time. And then the third time. Again he said, Behold, I come quickly. Amen. He jumped down off the rostrum and tripped and fell right on the lap of a man sitting on the front seat. And he said, I'm sorry, brother, please forgive me. He said, That's all right. You warned me three times. Amen. Amen. But when Jesus says it, He's coming. Amen. Quickly? Brother Collins, what does it mean? We must understand. Praise God, this word quickly in relation to eternity and He who dwells in eternity and He who is the first and the last. Amen. I'm talking about the eternity of millions and millions of years of unmeasured time. That's why he could say in the last page, Behold, I come quickly. It is quickly. Praise God. And it's going to happen. How did they get there? Praise God. Around the throne, four thrones are seats. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps. A fire burning before the throne, which are in heaven and before the throne, was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, there around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes. Amen. A translation says, living creatures. God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. I like J.A. Sy's translation of that. He said the living creatures was not only a, another order of redeemed, but even a higher order of the redeemed, even closer to the throne than the 24 elders. Amen. I like that. Amen. If I find out it's wrong, I'll let you know. Amen. The first beast was like a lion. The second beast like a calf. The third beast as a face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. What does that mean? It means all these banners, all these representative uh, figures were a representative group. Amen. Israel marched under four banners. When they marched through the wilderness 40 years. Amen. Uh, uh, three of them marched under the lion. Three of them marched under a calf or an ox. Three of them marched under the banner of the face of a man. Amen. And three tribes marched under the banner of a flying eagle. Amen. Each one of these banners are symbols. Uh, amen. 
portray another group or order of redeemed that stand before the throne and continually worship God day and night. Saying, holy, holy, holy. They look around and they're struck with awe when they see what they see yonder on the sea of the... They portray, saw portrayed before them the glories of the heavenlies. Uh, amen. They ran out of breath and said, holy. And they looked at something else and said, holy. And they turned and looked this way and said, holy. Every way they looked, it was holy, holy, holy. Amen. There was no higher explanation. There was no higher praise. There was no higher glory they could give to God. And so they didn't even rest day or night. Amen. But said, holy, 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 holy. They looked at the sea of glass and said, holy. They looked at the throne and said, holy. They looked at him who sat on the throne and said, holy. They looked at the city of God and the angels and cried, holy. I'll bow someday on my knees and cry, holy. Be the Son of God. Amen. They rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And when the beast gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne and liveth forever, the four and twenty elders fell down before him and sat on the throne, that sat on the throne, and Worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns down before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord. Amen. Who are they? Who are these four living creatures? Amen. Who are these uh, 24 elders? They are a representative group. Praise God. And when he had taken the book, chapter 5, verse 8, the four beasts and the twenty-four elders, you're eating with me, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them Elders had harps. Four beasts had harps, living creatures. Golden vials full of the odors, which are the prayers of the saints. That's what Edward Lackey said about his conversion. When he came home from World War I, he promised God when everybody in his company got killed but him, that when he got home and gave his life to God, a man told about coming home on that ship and said they had sauerkraut and wieners and they all got seasick and they had sauerkraut and wieners all over the ship. Amen. Said when he got home, he said he forgot about his promise to God and got drunk first thing. He became an alcoholic on Skid Row and one day as he I uh, walked down Broadway in St. Louis, Missouri. Amen. Uh, he passed by a mission where they were singing gospel songs and preaching the gospel and sat down in the back and something got a hold of him and he made his way down to the altar and gave his life to God and God gloriously saved him and he said he fell back in a puddle of glory praising and glorifying God. And he said, I think I can tell you what happened. He said that the Bible said that God has those golden vials full of the prayers of the saints. 
And I think one day he uncapped one of them and my mother's prayers came up before God and God said, where's he at? And he said, he's walking down Broadway in St. Louis, Missouri. Amen. And God came down and reined me in and saved my soul and answered my mother's prayers. There are no unanswered prayers. What God don't give you down here, He'll make up for it on the other side. He's still got them saved up full of odors. Which are the prayers of the saints? You want to please God? Pray a lot. That sweet perfume. That sweet incense. Amen. Paul said we make the Spirit make of intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The world don't understand it. Amen. Fred Brock didn't understand it when his daddy got saved and he spent a whole year crying out to God 24 hours a day. But God needed to hear those prayers. God needed to smell those sweet odors. Sherman Brock, it seems, would catch up on 80 years praying in the 81st year of his life. Praise God. 80 years of cussing. 80 years of using the name of the Lord in vain. Hallelujah. I went down to see him at the hospital. And I said, Mr. Brock, I'm going to pray for you. He said, I don't feel like being bothered. And it made me plumb mad. And I said, if that's the way the old coot feels about it, I'll not go back and see him anymore. Amen. Praise God. But I did. I got over it. Amen. And I went back to the hospital. I didn't even ask him if I could pray. I didn't say dog to him. Amen. I just walked in and I prayed anyhow. Amen. On Saturday, Bill Morse drove in front of the parsonage and swung over pulled into the driveway and said he lived right behind me he said brother Collins he said if you feel at all like it Bill Morse had uh, known Sherman Brock all his life Bill Morse had paddled a boat for him when he made those float fishes down the Cumberland River amen and he said if I would make the least mistake or paddle a boat wrong or take it where he didn't want to go he had the filthiest mouth of any man you ever heard he would cuss me out, and I'd just done the best I could to paddle a boat. Amen. But he said, if you feel it all like it, go by and see Sherman Brock. Amen. said, he's crying out to God like no man I ever heard. Well, by the time I got to the house, he had already prayed through. Amen. He was shouting happy and praising and glorifying God. And he did that 24 hours a day, every waking moment. Praise God for a whole year. Fred, Fred and Mina came here for several years, amen. They still come to visit once in a while. I bought my first bass guitar off of Fred, amen. Then I traded it to him for a Billy Grammer guitar, amen. The only reason I did it because he was in the church and he could play the bass and I'd have a good Billy Grammer guitar. Thieves broke in and stole it. Amen. Fred Brock, I've been his pastor three times in Barberville, at Middletown, and at the Highway of Holiness. Amen. Fred wasn't saved. And he said, I just don't believe there's any use in all that praying, he said. But that didn't make Sherman Brock any difference. He had got saved in his 81st year. And he called on God day and night. I thought, well, maybe he's got his mind on himself and on his own problems. And so I told him, I said, uh, Brother Brock, I said, when you pray, uh, don't pray for yourself altogether. I said, pray for me. He said, I have, preacher. I have prayed for all these other preachers in town too. Amen. I guess you would if you prayed 24 hours a day for a whole year. You'd finally call everybody's name in prayer. Amen. He prayed. Glory to God. Oh, yes. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not. The line of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. Who's coming? 
on that last page of the Bible, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the figure that Judah, amen, and three of those tribes marched under. Praise God. Figure of a lion. Jesus came through the lineage of Judah. Praise God. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Listen to what they did. Amen. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him and sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, the four and twenty elders, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they, who? Twenty-four elders and four creatures. Four living creatures. Zoa, some say. And what did they say? Amen. They sung a new song. Woo-wee. Amen. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. Wouldn't you like to have the music to that? Amen. For thou was slain. Amen. And hast redeemed us to God. What? Thou hast redeemed us to God. Now we are redeemed sitting right here tonight, but we've not been redeemed to God yet. We have been redeemed at Calvary. We are being redeemed right here as we sit here tonight. Amen. But tomorrow we shall be redeemed. Paul said the whole creation groans and travails together until now. Amen. For the manifestation of the sons of God to wit. That means in everyday Arkansas language. That is the redemption of our body. Praise God, our body hasn't been redeemed yet. That's why a princess came crippling into church the other night, walking on a cane. Our body has not been redeemed yet. Huh? That's why it's getting harder for me to climb stairs. Amen. It hurts my knees to climb stairs because my body, Brother Byrne, hasn't been redeemed yet. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. Hey, that's why Brother Dave Miller's been suffering in pain. The doctor found two little moles on his back, and he said, that's cancer. And he said uh, he never paid any attention to it right around his belt line. Two little moles, no bigger than anything. The doctor said, I've got to take them out. He said, they may not be cancer yet, but they're in the first stages of nymphoma. And he said, i got to get him out of there. And so he made an incision about the size of a dime and took those two little growths out of there. Amen. And Brother Dave has been at home, can't hardly stand his belt, his trousers or anything for two or three weeks now. Amen. Barely able to go to church. He said, I never suffered such pain. I didn't know such a small incision could cause so much trouble. What's wrong with us? Amen. Our body hasn't been resurrected yet. There's one more thing that's got to be redeemed, and that's our body, praise God. And someday, if we'll live for God, we'll join this ransom throne and say, Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every nation, kindred, and tribe, and tongue. That's why I preach a pre-tribulation rapture. They have just introduced the book. Not a single seal has been opened. And here they are already in heaven around the throne, a representative group representing the vast multitudes of the church, Old and New Testament saints, singing a new song, shouting the victory around the throne before the first seal is opened to that book. Not only are they in heaven before the first seal is opened, 
Amen. One of those living creatures shouts, come and see. Amen. As they open those seals. Amen. Not only are they already in heaven, the elders are there to introduce the Redeemer. They're in vital participation with Him in the opening of the seven seal book. And that's why that clinches it, folks. There's a group of people going to heaven before the tribulation starts. Not only are they in heaven before the tribulation starts, they're pouring on the coal. <laughs> they're firing the furnace. They're introducing the judgments. Praise God. They're introducing the, the wrath of God. They're introducing the Redeemer. Amen. They are with Him. Judging angels. Judging men. Amen. And they said, Thou hast made us unto God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Who is that on those horses with that judge that's coming? That's us. That's this bunch. Praise God. Amen, folks. We're rushing toward the end. We're down to the last page. The next great event that must be fulfilled before Jesus can come back to the earth to reign, he must first take the saints out of the earth so he can clean the mess up. He can't clean this place up till he gets rid of us. <laughs> We're in the way. Amen. And what he's going to do is worse than anything that happened in all the genocide of Kosovo. What he's going to do to this world is worse than anything that happened in the Holocaust of Europe. What he's going to do to this world, amen, is worse than anything that's ever happened to the Jews from the beginning of the time. This is the way Jesus termed it in Matthew 24. Amen. It'll be a time of tribulation such as was not before the beginning of time, nor never shall be thereafter. Amen. I'll tell you tonight, the judge is coming, and there ought to be left here. When he takes the church out, amen. Corey Ten Boom watched Betsy, her sister, wither away. She smuggled, begged, and borrowed medicines for her in all her sicknesses in the concentration camp. She covered for her. But then one day, Corey had to bid Betsy goodbye. In that tearful farewell, Betsy, amen, admonished her to meet her on the other side. Praise God. Don't be bitter. Be forgiving. Praise God. I'll tell you what, folks. All of the concentration camps in Eastern Europe put together, amen, is like a playhouse upside the Great Tribulation. Blood runs four feet deep to the horse's bridles. When a third of the waters is turned to blood, a third of the beasts are killed. A third of men die over and over again. The doors of the bottomless pit are opened. And demonic tormenting hosts come out. Two hundred million soldiers march across the Euphrates that God has dried up to make away the kings of the east. My God, even the beast himself, amen, is... Uh, is, is wounded in battle and his right hand is withered and his right eye is put out. Uh, amen. And uh, when Moshe Dayan uh, became the leader of Israel uh, and one of the great generals that conquered in the Six-Day War, Amen, when Moshe Dayan wept uh, in the Yom Kippur War in 73, a lot of people thought because Moshe Dayan had an eye patch in one eye, he might be the Antichrist. No, it wasn't him. 
You don't have to worry about anybody being the Antichrist. You don't even have to worry about question who he is as long as the church is here. As long as the church is here, Jerry Wayne, he can't even be revealed. Amen. He won't even show his face as long as the church is here. Amen. He can't handle that bunch of prayer warriors. Amen. The devil can't handle people that's washed in the blood and filled with the Holy Ghost. You know why? Paul said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, praise God, put all the Pauls and all the James, all of Peter, all the John, all the Marys and all the Susans, amen, and saved together, praise God, and all of them have the same Christ. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The church is too hot to handle for the Antichrist. He can't even show his face as long as the church is here. Amen. Oh, there are many Antichrists. Ah, yes. But the Antichrist has never been revealed and won't until this group get to heaven to help loose the seals of this book. Amen. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice. Amen. We was having church like we have in Bartonville, Kentucky, one block from Union College and Amen. One of the professors that rented a house from Brother Garrett Powell brought his whole family to my church a time or two. Amen. About the first time he came, or second time he came, he said, I would like to have a word with you, if I may, after church. And so I shook hands with everybody and put him off until the last one. And he said, I would like to say, young man, all this shouting is not necessary. Well, I knew he was a learned man, so I decided to spring a, a definition on him. I said, I said, didn't the Bible said, said that they, they, they praised God with a loud voice? And I said, isn't that in the strictest sense of the term, the definition of shouting? And he said, as he hung his head, I suppose so, and turned around and walked away. And I never heard from him anymore. Praise God. Amen. I wrote a song about that titled Heaven Bound. Amen. I said some folks think we're emotional. They, we sing and preach too loud, but it won't matter what they think. When Jesus splits the clouds, we'll shout all over heaven through glories never told. Mercy found, I'm a heaven bound. Gonna walk them streets of gold. Heaven bound. Heaven bound. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Heaven bound. Heaven bound. Praise God. Aren't you glad we're heaven bound? Amen. Here it is. Sing with a loud voice. Going to be a lot of shouting in heaven. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and glory, and blessing. Hey, who's coming in that last page? It's the Lamb that was slain. And you know whose blood, whose hands his blood's going to be on when the judge comes? Ours, if we don't get washed in it. Get our heart cleaned up. Get washed in the blood. Amen. If you don't get his blood on your heart and your soul, it's going to be on your hands. When the judge comes, every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying. Don't you listen to this? Every creature is talking now. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. 
And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And when John heard him say on the last page, Behold, I come quickly, soon, with expedition. That means it's near, and it's going to happen quick. Amen. John said, just like those four living creatures, Amen. So be it. Amen means let it be so. But he goes on and amplifies that. So be it. Even so come Lord Jesus. Stand with me and let's pray. The last page. Tell me what you think about holiness after the last page is enacted. We meet to judge. Tell me what you think about rebellion.